Okay, first of all, if you see my hands at any point today, just ignore them. I've been staining cedar all day. <laughs> if you're familiar with this channel, you know that my fiance and I are actually building a camper van right now. If you don't know me, hi, hello, my name is Rachel. I'm one half of this channel. We're both travelers and English teachers, and we love sharing tips on how to make extra money and save your money and all of that. So enter the world of online English teaching. So as you can see from the title of this video, um, this is all about Cambly and Palfish. I'm on both platforms. I've been with Palfish for like two years, but I only started taking it seriously about a year ago. And then I only got accepted to Cambly just over a month ago. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about what I like and what I don't like about both platforms. And we'll be doing kind of like a pro and con sort of thing here. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, let's talk about the similarities between the two platforms. For both Cambly and Palfish, you do not need a degree, you just need a TEFL certificate. And on both platforms, you have the opportunity to teach both adults and children. And then the major pro of both of the platforms is that you need little to no experience and you can gain experience and money from teaching kids in other parts of the world. And you can do all of that from the comfort of your own home. So let's start by talking about the pros of Cambly. Just to make it clear, everything in this video is my personal opinion from my personal experience teaching on these platforms. You may have a totally different experience, but I figured I'd share mine with you today. So the first pro of Cambly is that you don't need to be a native speaker to teach English on the platform. On Palfish, you do have to be a native speaker and you have to be a citizen of one of their selected countries. So for example, there's tons of native English speakers from all over the world, but the huge one that always stands out to me is South Africa, and Palfish doesn't currently accept South Africans to teach on their Palfish official kids course. So to me, that's a little bit weird. I think it's awesome that anyone can apply to Cambly. If you feel so fit to teach English, um, you can certainly apply. Another thing that I love about Cambly is that you can teach people from all over the world. So people from a variety of different countries, or maybe even your own country, um, who are looking to learn English, can sign up for the platform as a student and then you can tutor basically anyone. That's not the same for Palfish. So Palfish is a Chinese owned company and the majority of the students are based in Beijing. I obviously have nothing against my students from Beijing, but I'm not gonna lie, it is interesting to talk to people from a variety of different cultures because you get to learn different things and you kind of get to switch it up a bit and learn about different cultures. So I think that's really cool. Another huge pro that I have for Cambly is that you can teach at basically any time that you want throughout the day. So the Palfish official kids course will have the slots open for you to book at any point in the day. But the reality is because you're teaching kids that are all in the same time zone, um, there are some hot times that you really wanna be available at. This is something I consider a con for Palfish and we'll be talking about that later as well. The next one is a pro or a con depending on what your preference is. To me, it's a pro. Um, on Cambly, you teach on your computer, whereas on Palfish, you teach on your phone. I love using my computer. I'm just more comfortable using my laptop for everything. I use it all day, all the time. So being able to teach on my laptop is way easier for me. Some people don't have a laptop, so this is a major con because they only have a phone, and in which case, Palfish is the app for you. Also, what I love about Cambly is that it's just more relaxed. I find the whole interface and the reservations and the students and the way of teaching on Cambly is a lot more relaxed than it is on Palfish, which is a little more strict and you kind of have to do it their way on Palfish. Whereas on Cambly, I feel like there's more opportunity to bring your own flair, especially if you're teaching adults on Cambly because oftentimes it's just a free talk so you can talk about whatever you want or whatever they want. So I think that that's really cool. So what I don't like about Cambly. So if you've watched my Cambly application video, you would know that I was very confused through the application process. If you haven't watched it because you haven't applied yet, um, you might want to watch that when you do apply. But in general, it was just pretty confusing. It wasn't as straightforward. I got a whole whack of slides um, with no direction. And then you basically film the video at any point that you want and then you upload it. I wasn't able to finish all the slides. I didn't know if that meant I wasn't going to get accepted. And then it took me like four months to get accepted to the program. And the whole thing, the whole application process was just really confusing, not straightforward, and it was just kind of weird. But this goes for Cambly in general. There is just less structure when you're teaching for Cambly versus when you're teaching for Palfish. Also the pay for Cambly and even the Cambly kids um, is just not that good. It does not compare to the other online teaching platforms. So if you do have a degree teaching for like VipKid and Data ABC, um, you'll see that the pay is pretty high. It's usually like $25 an hour or higher um, or sitting around there and Palfish falls into that category as well. And Cambly certainly just does not. The pay is not as good. We're not gonna beat around the 
bush. It's just one of the lower paying platforms. And it is, it's more relaxed. So especially if you're looking to teach adults, if you're not the type of person that just likes to strike up conversation and um, talk to people about anything, to find topics that you wanna talk about or to talk about whatever they wanna talk about, if that's just not your cup of tea, then you won't really like Cambly because it is less structured. On Cambly Kids, you are provided slides and there are some courses on Cambly that people can enroll in. So that's a little more structured because it will show you like, oh, for one minute, play this game. And then for the next minute, do a matching game. But sometimes the kids power through it really fast and then you have to find other stuff to talk about. That's the same for Palfish as well, but I figured that it's worth mentioning that without a doubt, Cambly is way less structured than Palfish is. And that can be a pro or a con, depending on who you are. Okay, so let's talk about the Palfish Pros. I've done multiple videos on Palfish, so if you've watched those, then some of these may be repeats for you. Although we are comparing them to Cambly now, so we will be talking about Palfish versus Cambly in this one section as we have been through this video. You guys know what's going on. I don't have to explain that to you. Pro number one, you can teach on your phone. So a lot of people have a phone. Most people have a phone. So if you have a smartphone, you don't have a laptop, don't worry, you don't have to buy a laptop to teach online. You can just teach on Palfish. The money is good on Palfish. It's definitely better than Cambly, so that is worth mentioning for sure. And the structure is straightforward, even throughout the application process, well into when you're teaching. I find that Palfish is more like traditional school versus Cambly and less of a, a free talk kind of situation. What I also like about Palfish is that there's filters that you can wear on your face, like Snapchat or Instagram or whatever. So those can be really fun to use in your classroom. Um, there's more interactive games, so you can like press a button and spin the wheel, um, clicking, hitting things with a hammer. Like there's all sorts of fun games like that on Palfish, so I find it easier to keep, especially the little kids, entertained. I find that on Cambly when I have a really little kid, I have to use lots of props and like be super energetic and try to get their attention in different ways because there's not a lot of stuff in the actual interface of the program. And then with Palfish as well, the reports um, after the class, I find to be more structured than Cambly. Now let's talk about the Palfish cons. In the classroom, oftentimes the admins will be watching you so they'll say stuff and give you feedback throughout your class, like be more energetic, which could be helpful for some people, but I do know that it can be distracting for a lot of Palfish teachers, especially if you have like a regular student that you already have a rapport with, you have your way of communicating with them. It can be kind of distracting to get those messages throughout your class because you're trying to read the message from the admin and engage with your student and do a whole whack of things at once. So that is something that I really don't like about Palfish and I know that a lot of Palfish teachers would agree. So on Palfish, like we talked about earlier, you're you're only teaching students from China, mostly Beijing, which again is fine. I love my students from Beijing, but it just makes scheduling a little bit more difficult. So when you're living overseas, which I'm sure a lot of you are, um, you have to kind of match up your times with the Beijing times. So for me on the west coast of Canada, it can be quite difficult because this means waking up at like 4 a.m., sometimes as early as 3 or 2 a.m. The time conversion is a little bit awkward. Like I said, there are other slots available on Palfish, but these are really like the hot times, basically because you're trying to book your schedule around when the kids wake up before they go to school, and then when the kids get home from school, but not too late because then they're going to bed. So you kind of have these like four hour chunks that you want to teach between. And for me, that meant teaching really early in the morning or really early at night. Like I said, you can book the slots later on, but I just find they don't get filled as much. And if you're trying to do this full time or even 25 hours a week part time, um, it can be really hard to book your schedule unless you're willing to work these kinds of hours. Again, this is just on the West Coast of Canada. Um, the East Coast was a lot easier when I was living there. So it really depends on your time zone. You have less flexibility when it comes to actually picking your schedule. Whereas on Cambly, you can just really teach whenever. Now the money for free talk on Palfish, which is not the official kids course. This is when you can teach adults or kids or whoever, basically anyone who wants to talk and just call you and practice their conversational English. The free talk rates are really low and I found that there was some spam and to be honest, some creeps on Palfish. Some people love teaching on Palfish free talk. They've made really good friends. So I'm not completely bashing this whole part of the platform. But for me personally, I've never really had that great of an experience with it. And then even when I did, I wasn't getting paid enough money to make it worth it to be able to put those hours. So I only really recommend the Palfish official kids course um, if you can. So basically in conclusion, if you haven't figured it out yet, 
Cambly is a lot more chill, but it pays less, and Palfish is more strict, but it pays more. So what platform do I think is better? So I personally really like Cambly for what I am doing right now. I'm super busy lately, so I don't have the time to commit to Palfish. Palfish served me really well throughout the winter, and when I was kind of just hunkering down, trying to save a lot of money, and I had more time and freedom to wake up early. I have a huge project on the go right now, so I just simply do not have time for it. But at the same time, Palfish, is probably better in the long run. So if you're looking for a job job, um, something that you can do every day, if you're gonna try to do this full time, Palfish is certainly better. It pays more and it's more organized. So it's certainly better for that kind of circumstance. But at the same time, I just suggest doing both. It doesn't hurt to apply to both platforms. I've seen lots of people do this. They try to switch it up. So they'll do say four hours on Palfish and then throughout the day, they'll have scattered bookings throughout Cambly or however you wanna plan that. But wait, before you go, I already know that there's gonna be two questions in the comments that I'm just gonna answer straight up now. Number one would be, which is better for getting bookings? Personally, I have not had a problem getting bookings on either platform. Um, when I signed up for both, I was able to get bookings right away and I've been able to fill whatever slots I have open. I know this isn't true for everyone. I don't know if I'm just really lucky or if it's because of my experience. I don't know what it is, but from my experience, I haven't had any problems getting bookings on either platform. And then I also know that people are gonna ask, can you teach with the pink hair. Yes, you can on both platforms. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helped if you're deciding between Cambly or Palfish, or if you're just curious about the other platform you teach on one, or whatever reason you're watching this video. I hope this gave you some information about the platforms. So good luck and happy teaching.